your D2L course site helps students keep in touch with you or helps you keep in touch with students. That's what the news is all about. But let's look at this contact me widget that's a little bit different than what we've used so far. In this case, we're seeing information about Jory, his phone number, his office hours. Obviously, that could be expanded. We've got a website here as well as this send me email link. When we click here, a window pops up from within D2L. Student didn't have to go to iMail to send him email. The subject line is already highlighted. I can just type right here and I'm able to scroll down and just hit the send button. I can send Jory an email message. So that's pretty powerful. That required writing some HTML because we've used a little D2Lism in there and I don't want to make this hard on you. What we've done is create a, an Adobe Acrobat form to make this easy. If you go back to our Course Home Go Green site and scroll to the bottom, you'll find the Contact Me widget form. Again, this is an Adobe Acrobat form which will create the HTML code for you and you just have to fill out some fields. What I want you to do is download this form. Don't use it within the browser. You'll get better results if you download the form. So hold down Control or Command and download the linked file as so we can put it exactly where we want it. On my shortcuts I've got class demos so I don't have to save everything to my desktop. So here we go, widget code PDF. I'm now ready to open that up in Acrobat Reader so that I can enter the information. Here's our document. I'm going to open with Acrobat Reader. Again, I have Acrobat Pro, which is how I create these forms but I also convert them so that somebody using Acrobat Reader, you can fill out the form, save the form, and in other cases, you might actually submit the form. So let's open it in Reader. Take a quick preview here. This is page one. We've got form fields, a couple of buttons. On page two, it reminds you what you're going to do in D2L to paste that content into a new widget. Okay, let's go back to page one and fill in the information. I'm going to customize the office hours a little bit. I'll add some new information. Because we're in Acrobat Reader running on our computer, I'm confident that this process HTML code will work. That's what I wanted to see. All I need to do is copy this text. I don't have to read it. I don't have to know that much about it. Let's try it. I could use the edit menu and copy or a keyboard shortcut. Now, if you already have a contact widget, you could just edit it and replace it. Let's try that first. I want to click the pencil because that's what gets me in the edit mode. And I went right into widgets, right into that contact me widget. I'm ready to edit this. I want to really edit the HTML code. I'm going to click the Edit HTML. I'm going to delete everything here and paste what was on the clipboard. And I'm going to say update. Now notice this text is my new text. I love that. I'm going to find the save button. I have to scroll a little bit. Let's go back to course home. And sure enough, our information is updated. 
But what if we're starting from scratch? I've still got that, that text from the form on my clipboard. I could start all over. Let me start from scratch. I'm going to go Edit Course. What I'm going to create is a new widget. So I have to get to Edit Course Widgets. This is a multi-step process. I'm going to create a widget, then I'm going to modify the home page in order to display that widget. I'll create a new widget. Widget Wonder. Now, remember that this is just my demo of pasted uh, HTML code from PDF form. It's important in your widgets that they have meaningful names. Wonder Widget or Widget Wonder is not a meaningful name because the name of the widget is actually going to show up. It would be much better to have contact me, but I already have a couple of those. Description, again, is simply information for you. It doesn't show up for your students. The real heart of where a widget is created is under content. So we're going to go to that view. We're not going to type in here because we've got HTML ready to go. At the bottom left of the text box is where we can see the edit HTML source code. I'm going to click in this window, paste, click the update button at the bottom. In the widget box, I have to click save. Now I've finished the widget. And what is my widget name? My widget name is Widget Wonder. I can preview the widget. So you see the name problem here. All right, I'll close that. Part two is to add this widget to your home page. So again, we click to go to our home page. We have to find what is the active home page, currently active. You need to click on Web Enhanced. It is a content. We're adding content to the home page. We go to that tab. And you can see I have several contact me already on here, but I know where this is. It's the last widget, probably. There it is. So at least I could find it. I'll say save. Now this widget is on this home page. What I can do, some of these widgets are not visible to students. Some are only visible to instructors. In this case, this is visible to students. I'm going to move this up. This SCC LMS resources has a restriction on who can view, view it. That's what that little, well, I call it a polywog icon is. Uh, in terms of hiding it from students, right? And as soon as we have added it, we have successfully updated our home page. Let's go see. Here's our news. Scrolling down, here is Widget Wonder, and here is the contact information from our PDF form. So again, Part of what I want to do is click on this, and sure enough, it opened a page that lets me compose email to my instructor. One of the other reasons that it's nice to have that on the home page is, number one, it's very convenient to students. The other is sometimes you might not show the class list to your students. One of the reasons you might not show the class list is because this username is visible and it does show you the login uh, ID for uh, not only your students but it shows your login ID to your students. So in some cases instructors turn off class lists. So go to edit course This is a nav bar. We have an active nav bar. I need to look at the class nav bar. 
take class list and move it off of my page. There is a save button here. You can already see that once I've saved, that information is no longer visible for students.